Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Daily Word. Today is Wednesday, February 2nd. Glad you could join me for our time together. The day before the big snowstorm, apparently. So I'm um, glad you could join me. It's kind of rainy and dark outside today, but it's warm in the church and in the sanctuary. So glad you could join me for our few minutes together. Hope you're prepared um, for tomorrow. Stay home if you can just stay home tomorrow. That'd be the best option, it sounds like. But anyway, um, whatever weather comes is what we'll have. And then we'll just figure out what's next um, in our lives together. So for the scripture this morning, <clears throat> I've chosen from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33. Um, they're familiar words. We actually uh, sing a gathering song, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. Um, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. We, we know these words well, right? And so we hear just this one particular verse this morning. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. So, you know, there are a lot of things that we want in life. If you're like me, um, you get emails and social media things. Um, when you think about buying something or you've bought one thing, then you get emails and text and, and Facebook posts and social media posts and things in the mail, catalogs about things you ought to buy next. And and they pile up and they say, well, since you bought this, you'd be interested in this. And if you go on Amazon and buy something, I bought something just the other day for Carter, and it said customers who bought this also bought this and this and this. And it entices us, right? We think we have to have new things all the time. Um, the latest fad, the latest thing that our neighbor has. Uh, we, we kind of live lives like that. From hobbies to interests to the passions we have in life, even with our jobs and our careers. I was talking with someone last night, and we were talking about, <coughs> excuse me, talking about jobs. And, and he said, you know, if I were to start over again, uh, I would choose something really different. You know, I wouldn't do what I'm doing now. Not that I hate it, but I also don't love it. And I said, you know, I really wouldn't choose differently at all. He said, no, of course not. He said, because you have a passion for what you do. And I got to thinking about that, about all of our lives and, and, and what that means for us to have a passion about what we do. Our hearts are full of longings. You know, we, we long for the passion for what we do for a living, right? We, uh, we long for certain things in life. Sometimes we're told by preachers in some situations that we're supposed to die to longing, and if we die to longing, then that's the key to being in good service to God. But it's really not a good idea, because the problem really not is not in the longing itself. God made us desire things in life. Um, God wants us to have the desires of our hearts. He wants our joy to be complete, if you will. Here's the thing about all of these things. Um, what God says to us in this text about our longings and about what we want and about living out our passions and the desires of our hearts and that God wants those things fulfilled in us. God says for us, first of all, before those things, seek God's kingdom and God's righteousness. That's where we should start. Now, I confess to you, and you all know that that's really hard, right? To first seek God's kingdom and God's righteousness. And then all these other things are added to you. That's hard. Because we sometimes get these things that we want in life. We seek to fulfill our passions to perpetuate this illusion that we're in control or that we're really wealthier than we are and we put on this persona of wealth and control. But the true joy, the true fulfillment 
the scripture says to us, lies in seeking God's way. And that obedience to this is the true key to happiness. So like always, you know, we're often taught in life, put the first things first. Put the first things first. You know, we want babies to crawl before they walk because there's something about that development of crawling that helps them through life. Um, we teach babies to say certain words and we increase their vocabulary. We often say about careers and about all the things that we do in life, look, put the first thing first, go through the right steps. And it's true about being a disciple, be about following God, about seeking the desires of our hearts, to put the first things first, to seek God and to seek God's presence in our lives, to listen to God, to obey God, to, to chase God, if you will, with some relentless determination. Because you see, I believe that God chases after us in that kind of relentless determination, how God moves after us, who God, how God calls us to love fiercely, as I've talked about the last couple of days. It's true about this. Seek first, seek first God's kingdom and God's righteousness. So, you know, I thought about the discussion I had with my friend last night about if I were to start over, if I were to do things differently, he said, and he's younger than me, um, not by a lot, but he's younger than me. And I got to thinking about him when I said, I wouldn't do things different. He said, no, because you're passionate about what you do. And I thought about him and I thought, you know, it's, it's not too late for him. He could change careers. He's a smart guy. He could do what it is that he wants to do. I wonder for us, if we think we've already arrived, but it's not too late, you see. We can still, no matter where we are in life, seek first God's kingdom and God's righteousness. Live out our passions. Be who it is that God calls us to be. Um, to stop accumulating stuff just because we think it makes us feel better or because we look better in someone else's eyes. And... and live out a passion that God calls us to. I felt bad for him when he said, yeah, of course, because you're passionate about what you do. Isn't, isn't that where we should be in life? Be passionate about what we do? God's kingdom, this reminder from Matthew, God's kingdom exhilarates our soul. And only by seeking God's kingdom and God's righteousness do we find this kind of wholeness in our lives? So I wonder for me, when I feel sometimes there's a hole in my life and I'm not doing exactly what I should be doing, or if we often ever feel that way, that we have this, this hole, I wonder if we should come back to this text in our lives. Seek first God's kingdom and God's righteousness. Make the first thing first again in our lives. The first thing first, the first step. And then these other things are added to our lives. I think that's an interesting word that, that I need to ponder in my life, even though, you know, it's interesting to me that other people, my friend last night specifically, um, he sees the passion in my life that sometimes I forget to look at. And I should take a closer look at what it is um, <clears throat> that God reminds me that I'm called to do and seek God's kingdom first and God's righteousness first and make that my first thing as we all should. So I hope that's a word that we can use today as we strive to live our lives. Um, stay safe, friends. Tomorrow, um, if it's really bad, I'm guessing I'll be at home uh, tomorrow and do the daily word from there. Join us Sunday morning at 1015 for worship Scout Sunday, we're going to have some scouts sharing in worship, reading scripture and sharing in the liturgy and celebrate their accomplishments throughout the year. So join us at 1015. If you can't be here, uh, join us on Facebook Live Sunday morning at 1015 as well. So the bulletin and the hymns for that 
are all included in the email that went out this morning. If you don't get that email and you want to get it, all you have to do is give me your email address and I can make sure you get added to the list. So have a great day. Stay safe, friends. Know of God's love that surrounds you. Mow my love for all of you. And I'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Have a great day.